What's going on guys and welcome back for another video. Y'all, these are my favorite ones to do. This is the married at 19. One, two, three, four, five years later, boy. Hey, boy. All y'all who didn't think we was going to make it, hey, boy. We are not newlywed any longer. I know. I feel like at three-year mark, we were like, okay, when are we not considered newlywed? And then at four years, everybody was like, you're still newlywed. And they said at five years, you're no longer considered newlywed. If you go on Google, it'll say between like one and seven years. But I'm not going to let them move the goalpost to seven, especially yeah. while I'm going on six years of marriage. Going on six. I'm going on marriage six years. You know, I, know, I know a thing or two about marriage except, oh well do they say in the at seven at year seven don't they say something about like a dry something yeah the seven year itch oh, which yeah. i don't know if we'll get the seven year itch because we actually have been together since high school high school sweetheart so really and we've known each other since we were like 11. yeah so i probably got my seven year itch when i re-met your tail in high school and i, I was, was the like, itch. You know what? This, <laughs> this attitude on wait isn't that funny so we dated in junior high a few years later, not seven years. Then you got the itch and found me again. Maybe I got the itch when we were engaged. We was engaged for a month, though. I don't know. I don't, I don't think know. we're getting maybe, the maybe itch. Maybe the itch is going to come. Maybe the itch is going to come. So how we doing? How you doing? What's what's good? What have yeah. you learned now after five whole years? One, two. That's like getting five NBA championship rings. Like That's a long time. I'm not going to sit here and say that I never thought we'd make it, babe. I knew we would. But... What do you think's different now in our relationship versus how it was when we first got married, year one, year two, year three? Do, can you even do that Literally now? everything. I think everything is 100 times better. It, okay, is it what you thought it was gonna be? This this past year puts all of our other years to shame, I feel like. Really? Yeah, I feel like every year that goes by, I feel like as long as we're continuing to grow and like get better and like serve each other better, I, it like puts the other years to shame and it's like wait it makes those other years not seem that great mm. you know what I mean uh I've always had a great marriage I don't know what you're talking about <laughs> oh, I haven't <laughs> but for the sake of the brand you know we gotta have, be perfect I mean we already read the book so <laughs> yeah we literally I don't know maybe that's problematic maybe we shouldn't have done that uh I mean this video is sponsored by audible so we're gonna talk about books and I don't know if I'd recommend anybody that hasn't been married for a very long time to write a book about their relationship because that book itself actually, I think, caused some of the most problems in our relationship. Yeah. And it's not inherently because the book was bad for us. The book was actually therapeutic or therapeutic in a, in a time where we didn't have access to therapy or counseling, which was during the pandemic when we wrote it. But the book caused us to reflect on everything that had happened up until that years point. Prior, yeah. And now two years later, you know, there's more stuff that's probably happened that'll probably be in the next one. But <laughs> I like I like books and I like books that are like that that are um really helpful. But I think one of the reasons that you'd say our relationship has gotten better is because we've had access to books that have like really been fruitful to us. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your favorite marriage book that you've read that you've directly applied to our relationship? Ooh, definitely five love, love languages. Five love Off languages? top, yeah. Okay, okay. That, that really, I feel like a few years ago when I read that, really helped put words to what I was feeling. And um, I, felt, I felt like at the time, the lack of attention that I was getting. Oh, there I am. Under the bus. <laughs> oh, you're backing up? Oh, you're gonna run me over again. Okay, there it is. Hey, really? Shout out to Audible for sponsoring today's video. If you guys aren't sure what Audible is, Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment all in one place. At Audible, you can find the largest selection of Audible books ranging from bestsellers to new releases and even celebrity memoirs, languages, business, motivation, and original entertainment from top celebrity creators and thousands of popular and binge-worthy podcasts. With their newest plan, Audible Plus, you can get full access to their Plus catalog. Now you can listen to thousands and thousands of popular audiobooks, original entertainment, and podcasts, including the ad-free versions of your favorite shows and exclusive series. And if you're into it, you can also find guided fitness and sleep tracks for better rest. 
All of this is available to download and stream so you can listen anywhere on any device. At this point, you guys know I love reading and this month I read a book that I think totally changed the game for me. It's called Who Not How and I actually listened to it on Audible in a day. <laughs> uh, we were snowed in and I listened and I just absolutely loved it. It totally changed the way I look at business and it got me thinking to find who's for all of the challenges. Y'all have heard me talk about it in the podcast. You guys are still a little bit unsure about how Audible works. Every month, Audible members get access to one free audiobook and the full access to the Plus catalog. And now, you guys can see if you like Audible with their 30-day free trial. So if you guys are ready to take your reading to the next level this year, go to audible.com slash Kaira or text Kaira to 500-500 to start using Audible today. Let me know what books you guys end up getting into because I would love some more recommendations. I actually just had to buy three more credits because I'm going through them too quick. Anyway, back to the video. But then also it helped me understand you a lot more um, in the ways that you like to be communicated to because I, before I even knew love languages, I didn't know that I was actually like putting my love language on you and being like, why aren't you like receptive to how I'm trying to show you love? Like you think that I'm, you're, I'm not appreciating you. And I'm like, what do you mean? I look, look how lovely I am. Look how much I'm trying to be on you and touching you and kissing you, all the things you love. Yeah, Gary Chapman really, um, he's helped a lot of people with that book. I mm -hmm. think that's like consistently one of the best sellers uh, in yeah. relationships. I liked The Meaning of Marriage by Timothy Keller mm -hmm. and his wife. I think her name is Kathy, so Tim and Kathy Keller. That book totally transformed the way I think about relationships. Um, first of all, I think that every relationship should lead to marriage because I think that um, that's the purpose. I think that's how God has ordained and ordered relationships to be. So if you're dating, you don't have any intention of marriage. What are you dating for? Is it recreation? Is it fun? I don't know, but that's not the way the Christian goes. But the meaning of marriage talks about by what the book is titled, The Meaning of Marriage. And one thing from that book that I really loved was him saying, the person that you marry is not the same person that they end up being. Mm -hmm. And it was that thought that got me really thinking about the idea and the concept of growing together. Before I would use terms like, oh, let's keep growing together uh, because we were young and of course we're gonna grow up and I wanna take our audience on the journey of our relationship and where we're gonna be. But I never really considered that term of growing together to mean quite literally, if you don't grow with your spouse, they ain't gonna be your spouse for very long. You need to sign up to be with that person. Yeah. That the person that they end up being is still them it's probably a better version of them so if you can go alongside them and like help them become better then you get to be with that person and the way that i think about growth myself is i want to grow into being a better man for you mm -hmm. and i just love the fact that we can come together as a couple and continue doing that journey together mm -hmm. and literally growing together when you decide to marry somebody at whatever age, and you know, you see a lot of people getting married really young, and realistically, when you marry that person, it's not in the hopes, with the hopes that they're gonna grow into the person you'd like them to be. You're marrying that person where they're at, but also with the idea that they may not ever change. They right. may remain that person forever. Or if they like, regress. Not every, yeah, not everybody gets the whole growth mindset. Like when we first got married, I definitely was not on like a fast track to growth of like, I wanna be this kind of person, I have these kind of goals. I was very much so just living life, just kind of floating along. And eventually I ended up adopting the mindset. Um, so I don't know, we could be singing a different tune right now if I wouldn't, if I'd be different now. Like, yeah, I, you we, know, you we, never really know. We've talked about that. Um, and even, even one of you. the struggles that we've had is, like what happens if the person that you married doesn't grow and you outgrow them or they actually regress so you actually probably even haven't grown or maybe you've grown and now the chasm between uh, where you are and where they are is even bigger what do you do do you stay married and that's something that we've had to think about where it's like for whatever reason if Kyra's health or if my health if my mental health or if her mental health goes south and you know something bad happens like am I still going to be able to be there for my wife even if it's a situation that could be like hurting me, even if it's not physical, like it's, there's so much to think about. And a lot of times when people do these videos, they can make it seem like it's all peachy keen. And if y'all know, I mean, if y'all read our book, you know everything and good in the hood over here all the time. The act of selflessness is something that I'm 
constantly going to be learning and replaying in my mind because although we have kids now and kids really grow you Expedite in the area of, 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 be, of being selfish, like they, they pull you right out of that. Um, there's also something to be said about learning to be a better servant. Mm -hmm. So it's not only like not being selfish, it's also how do I know, how do I learn to serve you in the areas that matter to you? And that's where I think the love yeah. languages come in. So yeah. That's why I would say I feel like our love now is more mature. Mm. Like it, it's not so fickle. I feel like it can withstand a lot more. Um, I feel like I'm not so easily shaken by the small things that before, like I remember in the beginning, like I thought, okay, when I get married, like I'm going to be romanced 24 seven. Like oh, I'm going to yeah, be yeah. receiving flowers at the hoo-ha. Like I thought I was going to be coming home to boxes of chocolates and like always receiving gifts. And like, mm -hmm. I literally thought I was going to be living a movie. Yeah. But now not only do I still get to receive flowers and get like get taken on sweet dates and um, I feel like I more easily recognize the ways that you do serve me um, and I'm not so cynical or like so judgmental towards any way anymore. Like I, I feel like I'm more open to accepting the ways that you serve me and the things that you do versus being like you never do anything for me. And obviously I feel like that would probably be like my biggest struggle in marriage is recognizing that it's not all about me all the time. Mm. Like I... I'm like, well, I want these kind of gifts and I want to be treated this way. And when it's, I, when it's my birthday, I want these things. Um, and I worried that like it came off as just selfish and really it just was. But I yeah, would say now I mean, that, sometimes it's okay to be, I think, selfish, especially if it's your day. And I don't think that you need to change um, the things that you like yeah. or the way your love language, the way you like to be served so that you can make it easier. Like I don't want the, the goal post necessarily move forward. I don't want the yeah. goal moved down. I want to reach the bar. I think I just don't want the bar to keep rising. Yeah. Um, so that's an area that I'm well, trying when to grow I tell in, you, I where literally... it's like I want to learn how to serve you better. So if I'm looking back next year at today's video, I want to know that I've grown in this specific area. Mm -hmm. I want to know that Kyra feels seen, that she feels loved, and that she feels served in a way that matters to her, not in a way that I want her to feel but then i also now have realistic expectations and not that the bar has been lowered because mm -hmm. i would say now i actually receive more than i thought i ever would like i i can tell that you care about me and think about me in like the small things not just the grand gestures of like the other day like i was taking a nap and you went and like closed the blinds and i just thought that was so sweet because you weren't even in the room like you were literally in here minding your own business whatever um and you still like you were thinking about little things that would help me sleep better so enough about us <laughs> now that we have been married long enough to probably give relationship advice because again my biggest flex is what i say i've been married longer than some people's longest dating relationships and i'm gonna kind of flex that muscle like something's obviously working you know thank god so if you had some advice that you could give to someone who's single dating engaged or newlywed what would you say babe what would you say? I would say... Single person. What okay. do you say to them? Um, I would say the people in your life, if you have a boyfriend or whatever, a fiance, even a husband, if you're already married, um, ask that person like what they, what they believe your characteristics are. Like what are you strong in? That's good. But then also what are you weak in? And try to be as receptive as possible. And whatever those weaknesses are, work on those. Not trying to self-love yourself into... Yes not recognizing your shortcomings, but focusing on yeah. those and making those shortcomings the things that you're really good yeah. at. And even like if you are single, ask your friends like, what what do you think about me? Like when you go home and you think about our friendship, what what are some ideas that pop into your head? Like, oh, I don't like how you are selfish in this way. Um, or I, I sometimes feel like you are a little bit snarky, a little bit rude. Um, when we're out, you gossip about other people, whatever it is, and work on those things because that's going to bleed into your marriage. Like, however you are, just by yourself, that's going to bleed into whatever relationship, even if it's just friendships. Um, it bleeds into it, and you, you have to learn how to be receptive of that because when you get married, so much of marriage is recognizing your own shortcomings like of course yeah it's easy to recognize your spouse's shortcomings um that's like the easy part but that you also know that your spouse is also recognizing your own shortcomings and you have to be prepared to handle that 
and move forward. So what I would say to the single person is don't let these people make you feel like you are damaged goods, that you're incomplete, that you just need somebody. Don't waste the single season. You've probably heard it, and I know it's probably cliche at this point, but there ain't nothing wrong with you. There ain't nothing wrong with you. And ain't no person gonna come in your life and be your functional savior. So get right with Jesus and be happy. To the dating couple, do not, and I repeat, do not think that whatever you turn a blind eye to during the dating relationship is gonna magically disappear in the engaged and early marriage because all that baggage is or, coming with your tail. So good. deal with that mess yeah. right now. And don't right turn, a, turn a blind eye to things and think that it's just gonna go away when you get married. No, you Because that's that. not always, pro- even like porn and masturbation, I feel like a lot of men- Porn and masturbation, y'all. A lot of men say like, oh, that's it's just because, it's just because I don't have like access to co- like con- um, sex consistently. So that's why I struggle with this. That's not always true. There are lots of married men that have access to sex pretty much whenever they want and they're still secretly in bondage to masturbation and porn. Click off the video right now, text your significant other, text your fiance or fiance, text your husband or wife and ask them if they watched porn in the last week, ask them if they watched porn this year. Just get it messy y'all because the only way that sin grows is in the dark. So expose that mess, repent of it, confess of it, and then get some accountability for it because the sun can set you free. Who Jesus sets free is free indeed, and you can overcome it. This is my testimony, y'all. You can overcome it. To the engaged couple, what do you say? Oh. We was um, engaged for a month. Make it short and make it sweet. Make it short and sweet, because you ain't going to make it. You ain't going to make it. No. You're going to make what? <laughs> You're not going to make it uh, trying to keep your hands off of them. Oh, because yeah, it's the, really the lust, y'all. Ooh, the engagement period. Yeah. Ours should have been half of the time it was. And it was only a month. It wasn't even a month. Y'all. Well, that's because we dated since I was 15. So by the time we were actually legally of age to get married, it's like... Hold on just okay. a little while longer. You're almost there. <laughs> but uh, I would say to the engaged couple, don't stress over the wedding. Having a small elopement, having a small wedding where it's just your family there, maybe a friend. I'm looking back on ours and it was just so, so special. It's so sweet. I literally so don't special. regret anything. Um, all that money that you're saving goes towards that honeymoon goes towards Get the apartment photos taken goes of you towards and your the home like goes towards paying off debt student loan debt like I'm don't, talking about photos don't okay. spend your day trying to make other people happy don't let trying to make other people happy push your wedding date further mm-hmm. and further to where now you just perpetually engage for no like yeah. go and be happy it's about you and your relationship celebrate show union on your honeymoon save that money yeah. you'll thank me later i literally recount our honeymoon more than i do our like, oh my wedding. goodness i don't even really i mean i'm not gonna say i don't remember the wedding because we had two of them how can i forget but yeah our wedding was awesome it was sweet we had great pictures it was fun but the honeymoon like killing that yeah. killing that and we we had fun y'all and it was still cheaper than what most people yeah what most weddings, weddings are yeah to the newly wed couple what do you say to them mm. when you first get married and you have your first big argument your first big fight whatever you want to call it um you know i feel like a lot of people and i've even heard from like other people i've talked to that you start to question every decision you ever made like you start to, to question like did i marry the right person this person's literally garbage they um, nasty they don't brush their teeth at you night start they don't making, clean up after they you start making assumptions about why they've wronged you or why they did what they did um you really lean in, lean into being a victim like in, in the resentment starts to grow honestly pretty much immediately when you start to think that way and i would just say your first fight will probably not be the last i will say fights and large arguments like that to that kind of magnitude i'm not talking about like screaming or hitting at each hitting each other that should never be happening you're getting hit dip but you know those arguments where it's like wow we're really not on the same page and it's not just like a oh, you know, we move on within 20 seconds or 30 seconds or like a few minutes. Like this is something that you feel hurt over. Um, It won't be your last fight probably, but just because it's your first big fight, try not to make that big of a deal out of it. Like try, yeah, try not to question everything. Don't bring up divorce. Like it's really probably not that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things. yeah, just try to try to stay level-headed. I feel like the big, the first like fight or argument seems like everything's crumbling around you. 
Um, and it's, it's probably not. What would I say to the newlywed couple? I would say church, consistently, community, and don't be afraid to have kids. Um, there's a thing going on in our culture where they're trying to dissuade young couples from having kids for however many years. And they're almost prescribing, oh, don't have kids for five years, don't have kids, whatever. Having kids was one of the best things that ever happened to me. Church, don't let nobody scare you out of having kids. And I think that this is so important, so important. Get your finances in order, get on the same page with the money. It is gonna save you so many headaches, so many fights. And there's just something to be said about the feeling, like how great it feels to know that you're truly on the same page with someone and you're building together and you're actually growing together at the same pace and equally yoked. So y'all heard about our marriage. We <laughs> gave y'all some relationship advice. We've been reluctant to give y'all for five years. But now that I am qualified with experience, I think I'm gonna start doing this a little bit more. I think yeah. there's a lot that can be explored here for singles, dating, uh, early marriage. As long as you ain't too far away from us, I think I'm, I'm gonna start talking about this. <laughs> you feel comfortable talking about it? Yeah, I think that we've definitely learned a lot. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching this video. We will see y'all next year when I'm going on seven years of marriage. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Yay. Uh, thank you guys for watching once again. Leave your best relationship advice that you've ever heard in the comment section below. I want to hear it. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Peace.